This evening, another local plane crashes, this time killing the pilot. Solicitor General promises legal action against local newspaper. More children enjoy the mashermani season. In the region, Maduro shuts down Venezuela's border with Brazil amid eight standoff. And in international news, Bangladesh calls off rescue operations in the wake of a massive fire. Star viewers in Guyana and around the world. Today is Friday, February 22, 2019, and this edition of Headline News is now being streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. I am Baby Backus. Thank you for joining us. Last month, the husband of Unica Stewart stabbed her several times about her body. He then beat her in her head with a piece of wood and left her for dead. Now, he is on the run and is offering to pay her and patch up their relationship. Esther Sobers had an exclusive interview with her. A young mother of three is grateful to be alive, as she was almost killed recently by her repeated husband. 24-year-old Unica Strode almost lost her life on the 29th of January after she was stabbed 11 times and hit to the head multiple times with a heavy object by her ex-husband, Kevin Smith. The incident occurred at Cowpen Street, Eccles, East Mangdanarara. After Smith committed the heinous act, he fled from the scene, and to this date, he's on the run. This has caused the young mother much distress as she is now feeling fearful for her life. Strove refers to that fateful day as the day I almost died. As she says it often echoes in her head as she reflects on her ex-husband's motives for wanting to kill her. I work at the market and he don't want me to work and then he start when I go home he would normally row up and call up so I decide to leave him and go by my auntie to file and leave and he, he come and he put me clothes out and put me outside decide for art and come by my mother which live in Baxter and live with him and live with my mother and he start it start getting more worse every day he come at my workplace disturbing me and so so he a morning he up to prepare my children and me to go to work after leaving an 11 years old abusive relationship, Strode was determined not to return to her ex-husband, who also threatened her life with black magic. It came me on to the night and tell she what is over your man and if I go back home in three weeks, he pay somebody. If I go back home in three weeks to work for me, I gonna run mad. So I decided to go to his auntie, which I never lock him up. So I decided to go to his auntie and to explain myself to the same time he come on and as I talk into she said man tell you don't do to me because I left you and as my mature for my own I don't ask you for nothing so man tell you don't do that I left you and I want to know after the young woman was reluctant to rekindle the union Smith decided to attack her decided to push me and drain and start to choke me up choke me up from then I know what next step please and I know if when, when I get conscious really is what happened. He start the two lash I get to my head is then I in no happen then from in the hospital then I know myself. Strode was taken to the Georgian Public Hospital where she spent two weeks as doctors worked tirelessly to keep her alive. She thanked the doctors of the Georgian Public Hospital for saving her life. However, life has not been the same for the young mother, as she is seeking assistance from the public. She said that she is constantly in fear for her life and is unable to work and support her three children. She was a vendor in the Starbrook market. Right now, I am a single parent, and it's very hard because I got to take care of myself. I have to go to the hospital. Likewise, I have to go and do a PC, a PC, a CP scan for fifteen thousand. I'm maturing since the incident last month, and now I'm maturing and go to school. It's a financial strain. Channel 2 headline news and Strode revisited the crime scene where the tragic ordeal occurred. For Strode, it was the first time she revisited the scene. It was an emotional visit for the woman as she divulged that if the police doesn't apprehend her ex-husband, he might find her and kill her. 
She said that only yesterday Smith called her phone, offering to settle the matter. She again refused his offer. She tried to call me and ask me to settle the case. Uh, if I could ask him for forgiveness, I would tell him, I cannot forgive. I never would forgive him. He, uh, if family come to my mother to ask her for me a million dollars in a house, I never could take it because he got he get loose from the police or the, I said to the matter, he, I still, I'm afraid he's come after me after what he do to me. I'm afraid if he come after me. Because of strode fear for her life, and in order to protect her privacy, if you would like to assist her, please call Channel 2 Headline News at 218-4949. For Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Former President and Prime Minister Samuel A. Hines today shared his Republic Day 2019 reflections saying, quote, As I join my fellow Guyanese citizens in marking Republic Day 2019, I cannot avoid pangs of regret that our President and Prime Minister did not persevere in their initial response to the no-confidence motion to abide by it, honoring our Constitution. Mr. Hines suggested that the government is delaying because they are afraid to hold early elections. Guyana's longest serving Prime Minister ended his reflection by noting that the current political situation helps us learn once more that we must not be seduced by the seemingly easy, unlawful path. Mr. Hines noted that the honorable path appears to be more challenging and demanding of us, but if taken, we would find our prospects of oil more rewarding. As the Mashramani festivities gear up for its most noted crescendo, the float parades, the children of several primary schools got to tour the city. Channel 2 Headline News caught up with some of the children at the Square of the Revolution. As the Sobers reports. The children from various schools across the country were treated to school tours at various monuments and historic buildings as they learned about the history of Guyana and great leaders. Channel 2 Headline News caught up with a few students at the Square of the Revolution and they sang a patriotic song. Children from Alpha Beast Play Group and Nursery are here to see some of the historical sites in Guyana as a part of the commemoration of the Mashramani celebration. So, these are all the children here. Many children were delighted to visit the Square of the Revolution as it was for many of them their first visit to the historic site. We are on an educational tour. We are here visiting the national monuments around Georgetown and then after we will go off to the fun city. We have eight teachers here and this is our PTA chairman and all the others are parents. The Mashramani Committee successfully planned a number of activities leading up to the grand celebration scheduled for tomorrow. For Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, another plane crashes, leaving one person dead, and the Solicitor General pledges a lawsuit against a local newspaper. But first, here are today's foreign currency exchange rates. For the latest in news from Guyana, the region, and beyond, visit our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. Activate the GTT Fab 5 plan today. For only 5,005, you get free unlimited calls to four of your closest family and friends, 5 gigs of data plus 250 text messages, and your Fab 5 friends can call you for free. 
GTT Fab 5. So who we put in as we Fab 5? Yes! This place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Churchtown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5494. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always just ride taxi service. Let's go. Listen and hear me good. It's Mashro Man in Guyana. And Clearance got this big mash, mash down sale. Thursday the 24th and Friday the 22nd of February. Half off night sneakers. 25% off men's short pants, jeans, jerseys, caps, and selected slippers. 25% off Kenneth Cole and Levi's. Half off selected ladies, jeans, tops, dresses, rompers, loafers, sandals, sneakers. Remember, Thursday the 24th and Friday the 22nd of February. Yes, clearance, mash down the price for mash. Clearance, always keeping you in style. Welcome back. In 2017, the Wings Aviation Services had an incident on takeoff from the Edwin Bank airstrip, which resulted in injuries to the pilot. Yesterday, the same service had a problem with an aircraft that was trying to land. That incident ended tragically. More in this report. A young pilot lost his life yesterday to a fiery death. The Cessna 602 plane he was flying crashed and burst into flames on impact at Etteringbang Region 7. Randy Liverpool of Norton Street, Georgetown, was on a shuttle flight when he met his demise. Reports are that the plane was observed coming in too low for landing at the Etteringbang airstrip. As persons rushed to the scene of the crash, the pilot was found engulfed in flames and reports are that the body was burned beyond recognition. He was the lone occupant in the plane at the time of the crash. Liverpool started flying several years ago while attached to Wings Aviation Ogle Airdrome. According to veteran aviator Captain Jerry Govaya, Liverpool was a very experienced and very careful pilot. The body was taken to the Etterinbank police station awaiting transport to Georgetown. This is the second plane crash for this week. On Tuesday evening, a Cessna 182 plane went down a back canal number two polder. While tragedy was averted, the pilot Lincoln Gomez and a police officer Michael Grimman aboard that plane are recovering from injuries sustained. They were transporting the body of a Christian missionary, Christopher Matthews, who died while climbing a mountain in the Arupuruni area. Starbuck News seems to be sticking to their report that Nigel Hawk the newly hired Solicitor General left his position in disgust two days ago. However, Hawk is maintaining that he did no such thing, and he is threatening to sue the Starbrook News. 
if they do not retract their story. Wendell Jeffrey is following that development. The Starbrook News is only saying that Nigel Hawke has denied that he resigned yesterday. But up to press time, the newspaper had not issued an official retraction on their claim that the Solicitor General did indeed walk off the job. The story broke yesterday in the local newspaper and on their website. Channel 2 Headline News was reliably informed that Hawke, who works out of the Attorney General's office, did not resign. However, in a call to the newspaper's editor yesterday, we were told that they were sticking to their reporting. Also, contrary to the Starbrook News story, Mr. Hawk said that he was not responsible for compiling and presenting the state's case for a stay of the constitutional mandates of the No Confidence Motion. The Chief Judge, Justice Roxanne George Wilcher, had ruled that the No Confidence Motion was legal and binding which means that the Granger administration stands resigned and elections are due in 90 days or March 21st. The government is asking the court to stay the effects of that ruling. However, a mix-up in the Attorney General's office filings on the matter caused the Justice of Appeal, Judge Rishi Prasad, to reject the state's pleadings. A date for the appeal to be heard has not been set. Hawke has demanded a public retraction for the newspaper's story or he has promised to take legal action. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, Maduro restricts aid, this time from the Brazilian border, and Bangladesh calls off rescue operation after a blaze in the capital city. But first, here's your bridge retraction schedule. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Churchtown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Listen and hear me good. It's Mashraman in Guyana. And Clearance got this big mash, mash down sale. Thursday the 24th and Friday the 22nd of February. Half off night sneakers. 25% off men's short pants, jeans, jerseys, caps, and selected slippers. 25% off Kenneth Cole and Levi's. Half off selected ladies' jeans, tops, dresses, rompers, loafers, sandals, sneakers. Remember, Thursday the 24th and Friday the 22nd of February. Yes, Clearance, mash down the price for mash. Clearance, always keeping you in style. Right now, no, no. Because all this time and money I waste in a cause alone can just send up my blood pressure. You've come to the right place. Really? Once you're switched over with our network, you can activate our Fab Five plan. With our Fab Five plan, you can enjoy free unlimited calls with four family and friends. 
you got to be kidding me. You will also get five gigabytes of data with 250 text messages. You got to be kidding me. And your chosen for can also call you for free. You got to be kidding me. Activate the GTT Fab 5 plan today. For only 5,005, you get free unlimited calls to four of your closest family and friends, five gigs of data plus 250 text messages, and your Fab 5 friends can call you for free. GTT Fab 5. Welcome back. Now for regional news. Venezuela's border with Brazil has been closed as President Nicolas Maduro steps up attempts to stop the U.S. aid from getting in. Maduro said on Thursday he is considering closing the border with Colombia as well. Opposition-led volunteers are trying to get the first delivery into Venezuela by Saturday, but the army is blocking them. Al Jazeera Lucia Newman reports from San Antonio on the Venezuela-Colombia border. A caravan of opposition deputies scuffle with National Guardsmen trying to block their way to the Colombian border. That's where opposition leader Juan Guaido vows to defy the government's prohibition to bring in tons of food and medicine donated by the United States and others. Pretending that humanitarian aid is not going to reach Venezuela is an act of cruelty. As opposition leaders slowly make their 800-kilometer journey to the border, the binational bridge that joins Colombia and Venezuela is quickly becoming the stage for a bizarre duel. On the Colombian side, a Venezuela aid live concert with world-famous pop stars in support of Venezuela's opposition movement. And not to be outdone, on the other side, a hands-off Venezuela concert called by embattled President Nicolas Maduro both scheduled to get underway in unison on Friday. As you can see, the stage on the Venezuelan side of the bridge is almost ready for the Battle of the Bands. But this dueling music event is framing a bigger battle over who is going to take credit for providing food and medicine for Venezuelans desperately in need. President Maduro insists he can provide for his countrymen and says shipments of medicine from Russia and China have just arrived prevent opponents from attempting to bring in stockpile supplies from neighboring Brazil, he's ordered the border sealed until further notice. But so far here in Táchira, the border with Colombia remains open, and thousands of volunteers have been crossing into Cúcuta. They say they're preparing to confront the armed forces to bring food and medicine back into Venezuela on Saturday, when Guaidó gives the word. We know the government has blocked the bridge with containers, but we're here to make it possible to bring in that humanitarian aid, by whatever means necessary. Guaidó says he'll be bringing the supplies across four bridges here in Táchira, as well as two ports in northern Venezuela. Exactly how the U.S.-backed opposition plans to do it without being stopped is still a mystery. And that's exactly what's raising the suspense and the tension on both sides of the border. Lucia Newman Al Jazeera, San Antonio, Venezuela. And in international news, Bangladesh authorities have called off the rescue operations in the wake of the massive fire in the national capital's Chawak Bazaar area. Firefighters have launched an inquiry to establish how the fire started. At least 70 people were killed and 40 others seriously injured. Al Jazeera's Barbara and Gopal reports from Dhaka. Burnt out chemical cylinders are some of what's left at the Wajid mansion in Dhaka's old city. Muhammad Alam ran a store close by. The fire has changed his life. My son died. He was with me in the store just before the incident. I told him to go home and have his dinner. Ten minutes after he left, I heard some big noise. I came out and saw a large fire. After seeing the fire, I went back inside my store. But I couldn't stay inside the store because there was an intense heat generated from the fire. The area was known for its chemical warehouses and perfume factories. But people there say that's not where the fire started. There were several loud noises, so I came out to see what was going on. Witnesses told me that a gas cylinder in a car in a wedding procession exploded. Then the fire spread towards the Wajid Mansion's second floor where perfume chemicals were stored, which then ignited. 
firefighters have launched an inquiry to establish exactly what happened. Our people will go for the investigation and they throw the investigation they will find a lot of clues. They will justify those clues and they, at that time they will be able to identify actually what is the reason for the fire. There are an estimated 1,000 factories in the old part of Dhaka. More than 850 of them are illegal. A fire in the same area killed 120 people nine years ago. Since then, the government has carried out raids to shut down illegal operations as recently as last month. I'm the, I'm the landowner, so if I'm not, I'm letting them to uh, be staff their works, things here, so it's our, our fault. The search for dozens of people who were trapped in the building as it burnt for 12 hours is ongoing. The wait for those wanting news of friends and relatives who are inside is an anxious one. Barbara Angopa, Al Jazeera. Here's the three-day weather forecast. That's Channel 2 Headline News for this Friday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. You can also tune in Sunday morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast and Monday evening at 7 for more news. For now, I am Bibi Baker signing out from your newscasting. Thank you for staying tuned and to have a blessed weekend and a happy Mashramani.